All right, so a little update. We're out on a walk trying to figure out, could we drive out today? Because we're starting to see grass around where the van is, but unfortunately we have to go up before we can go down. And if you walk up this high, there's already uh, six inches of snow and it goes up a little higher. Now, as mentioned in the last video, I tore my meniscus. So now that the snow's gotten deep, I didn't want to walk any further. It has felt very good to walk, um, but also could be better on only a thousand calories a day right now. But anyway, I thought I would take this time while she does the turnaround and she wanted to make the snow prints so that it's, you know, as the snow melts, it'll be easier for, for us to drive out. I just thought I would take the time to maybe make that second video talking about um, music, religion, and capitalism and how they all fit together. So if you guys will happen to watch the improv history video that I did back, I think January or sometime, I talked about how music has really been with humanity since its very beginning. When you study the anthropological history, well, I didn't, but when you read the research of people who did, music is something that seems to have emerged along with culture, language, and everything else that we uh, take for granted as being humans as our morphologies uh, allowed our larynxes, these more uh, varied sounds that we can make, and also uh, having higher calorie diets leading to larger brains. So we're talking about half a million years ago at this point, people sitting around a, a hearth to cook food so they can get more nutrition out of the food, but they need to coordinate the effort to be able to, to get all the, the wood that they need to chop. I had to make a fire because we're out of propane. And let me tell you, you have to go through a lot of wood. Uh, a lot more wood than you think you would. So, yeah, so back in the day, the tribe would have to gather like um, like 200 pounds of wood a day just to make their, their fire for the night. So this led to people sitting around the fire, telling stories, singing songs, singing, making rhythms, making things that are just kind of meaningful sounds to communicate. And from the beginning, it probably had the same variety of purposes that music does today, sometimes being spiritual, sometimes being... Uh, recreational as it were and so when we talk about religion too I, I want to talk about religion uh, mostly through a socio historical lens so if you happen to be religious I'm not I'm not here to take you away from your religion if you if you're atheist uh, and kind of averse to religion I'm not really talking about religion in the organized religion sense anyway so hopefully there's something to be found here and I'm not trying to rile anybody up I'm just talking about religion as something that is uh, also like music, pretty definitely human and evolved alongside us. And there's, there's uh, lots of the same evidence to suggest that people were mourning the dead and creating rituals and basically trying to ascribe some sort of greater meaning and purpose to the existence that we all find ourselves in in the first place. Um, and I see this evolutionarily as being sort of a necessary defense mechanism as our species got smarter. It's like, well, if you start to really think, you're going to get to some places where you're like, oh, but then why? <laughs> There's so much suffering. Why, why does this have to exist? Uh, you get smart enough to get self-reflective enough, you might start to get depressed. And so I think that religion is in many ways an antidote to that, has been. And again, I'm not saying like, I know that organized religion can really do a lot of mental harm to people and it's, it's all wrapped up in capitalism anyway, uh, which is to say not, not full spirituality. But, it, but even that being said, one other thing that I want to bring into this conversation is a discussion about what the actual dominant religion in the world is today. And um, a lot of people would make the claim that the dominant religion today is not Christianity or Islam, but, um, but capitalism itself. That the religion, the thing that gives us purpose and meaning, the thing that at the end of the day rules all, is uh, the dollar, is the pursuit of commodity, is the commodification of life. And I think this really impacts the former too. Uh, in, in a couple of ways. One is that for a lot of people, myself included, music ends up being as important as any religion. It, it ends up being the spiritual fulfillment in and of itself because it allows for a feeling of connecting to something that's greater than yourself. It allows for a feeling of uh, introspection, but also looking out into the world. Um, 
you know, it, and it feels good. Music feels good when you're doing it uh, well. And it's a social thing, which is a, a hugely important part of all of that. So that that's okay, right? You know, um, but now we have this other thing. <laughs> we have the fact that really we have to um, serve capitalism. So just as back in the day, if you were like a composer during a time where you were either funded by the church or funded by a king, um, and then you had to sort of be okay with that authoritarianism, maybe even praise the crown, praise the, praise the system that is keeping you uh, subjugated so as to have a, a job. The same is really true today. You have to uh, make music in a way that serves capital and you're stupid for not. And I'm not like, <laughs> what's interesting is that like, I'm not even coming at this from someone who initially was a music purist. Like I grew up in the 90s. I, you know, have the same capitalistic ambition imbibed in me from a young age as anybody else. And though my parents are deeply religious and, um, you know, the, uh, they, they emphasize non-materialism, at the same time, we all exist in a world where commodity is the thing that is truly um, yearned for or craved for or, or craving is, is mistaken for yearning. And so even... From the earliest days with music, I wasn't approaching it purely as, oh, I just want to be a great musician. I was also approaching it, how will I make money from this? And while I think to a large extent that can explain why I, I am, that's only part of the story. The, the story is that, like, you, you can't actually just make good music anymore. And this is so frustrating. Like, I mean, this is, this is a rant in and of itself that I, I will say for a different video about how capitalism really keeps things from being the best versions of themselves because the the best version of itself is not the goal profit is the goal but that 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 really applies here and for you know for a while when you think about the big picture of of music and professional music there was a technological innovation in in recording technologies and for a while although there were obviously predatory practices by recording labels and stuff there was um you know, there was a lot of unknowns about really what makes a hit. So artists had record deals before they had, you know, actually a following. They had time to grow and they had gigs and opportunities because places needed nightly performances. Um, so there's this there's this very brief window where professional music looks like a certain thing. And I think everybody would agree that regardless of the the strengths that individuals can occasionally find with success via social media, the fact that everybody has to do it um, dilutes the, the art form because you have to spend time figuring out a ton of things that aren't even the thing that you're trying to share, which is the, the, the music, the songs, um, this, you know, whatever, the beautiful sounds that, that carry intrinsic meaning. That's what music comes down to. That's why it means so much. That's why music and religion overlap in significant ways. And this is why capitalism as a religion ends up infecting music in a particular way. Well, who cares? What does all this mean? Well, I think it's important that if you are trying to find a life that is filled with purpose and meaning, as I am, and I think a lot of people are, then if you want to do music. If you want to do anything, really. I mean, I also like activity, physical activity. If you want to be active, if you want to be learned, um, if you want to be social, these are all things that can be fulfilling in and of themselves if they're done in a way that's pure, in a way that feels like there's reciprocity, in a way that feels like there's iterative advancement in your understanding of. Um, those are all, you know, great things. But you can't do that if it's always twisted and, and malformed to something else. And so I think this is the realization that I've had. Again, having to, to make a fire, to melt snow, to get my water, to be doing uh, the most severe calorie restriction that I've, I've done since a couple of phases where I was just like really trying to get thin and I was like basically starving myself, which was good preparation for now. But it really has me keen in on how exactly to do music right to maximize meaning and to not worry about the capitalist machine 
um, in, in the moment, at least, you know, like that, that's the omnipresent threat in our lives. Like that's the feudal system that we live in, techno feudal system that we live in. Um, that's, that's, that's bigger than music though. What are you going to do with music itself? And so for me, <laughs> what that is, is, you know, I like every single day to explore more patterns. Uh, I've talked in the improv video about the geometry and colors of music, really seeing something that kind of makes sense uh, and transmitting that, uh, right? And, and, and using physics as an understanding to try to get first principles about music even, to try to make better recordings because of seeing what recording technologies truly is, which is uh, a wave creating machine that's capable of reproducing sounds that our ears will interpret as a sound, which it's not actually. When I record the cello, you're not really hearing me play cello. You're hearing, you know, first the, the sound is converted to a digital signal in the mic, and then it's, uh, then it's digital from there on out. Um, so there is a great opportunity to be artistic with this medium of social media, uh, to be aware of the situation that we're in with the techno feudalism, the postmodern condition, the need to sell yourself in an identity, regardless of uh, whether you have like the technological uh, background to do that effectively. That's the whole thing. And that, at least on its own, is complete and has, uh, has some meaning unto itself. So hopefully, uh, I, I don't need to, I don't need to make this video too much longer. There's some other ideas I want to branch off into, but I'll make them their own separate videos. But for this video, I wanted to just be able to share with you this little triangle, how music can be a, re a religion, but how capitalism is also the dominant religion and how religion organized or not is just as essential a part of the human spirit as, as music is. And I don't think hierarchy and capitalism are as intrinsic of uh, experiences to being human as that. So, you know, don't let it get you down. I guess that's the message. Anyway, guys, uh, those are my thoughts and we'll see you next time.